Good morning, guys. Welcome to the podcast. I've got David Hodel, and he is a tax mitigation consulting firm, specializes in pension plan designs, and he has creative solutions using defined benefit plans to mitigate taxes for business owners. It's going to be a really interesting conversation for the audience, many who have who are trying to reduce their taxable income, reduce how much they spend on taxes, and i um, really happy to have him on to discuss his business. So, Dave, welcome. Thank you, Christopher. Yeah, so briefly introduce yourself, and I'm excited to dive into the questions. Yeah, like you said in the introduction, we're a tax mitigation firm. I've been a, a financial advisor for 20 years. We saw a problem many years ago in the industry on the pension side and defined benefit side and decided to open up a consulting company to service that problem. That problem was that there are so many different designs out there when it comes to these types of pension plans, whether it's defined benefit, cash balance, combination. We sought out to find all different actuaries throughout the country. And we're not a third party administrator. We're on the consulting side of it. So we try to understand the client's issues and problems and then go and find the proper design and work with multiple designs to find what fits best for that client. There's so many resources and things that are needed in this space. And I could not find any consulting firm or anybody that would pull it all together, quarterback it between your financial advisor, your secret record keepers, and actuaries, third-party administrators. There was so much involved, but these plans are one of the, they've, st they've stood the test of time, I should say, from as far as one of the mitigation strategies that's out there. There's many new ones that we've seen and we are learn about everything, but this is an area where we could create this consulting company to only focus on this. Interesting. And for the audience, they're very familiar with IRA, Roth, 401, but what are, this is a new um, terminology for a lot. So defined benefit plan, cash balance plans, and how they differ from traditional retirement savings accounts. Yeah, we call those um, on the shelf type products or solutions. When we talk about 401ks, IRAs, Roths, these are things that are easy to do. Your advisor can do that with your, it, there, there's not a whole bunch of resources that are needed to do it. And they're not areas where we get involved in. We get the, uh, referrals and calls from the financial advisors and the CPAs, as well as clients when they are looking for a large deduction that can move the needle. And when I say that I'm talking about a client profile that's approximate that can that that can put away approximately a hundred thousand dollars or more per year and one of the misconceptions and i've written a, a lot of articles on this is is the flexibility everyone worries about if i put in two hundred thousand dollars do i have to do that again next month or next year or whatever it is and for the, the rest of my life and the answer is no there's a lot of flexibilities in these plans where most people think that there are not but this is not a on the shelf type plan. This is based on design. And what I found, like I said, is there's many different actuaries and they all have different calculations and different ways of doing things. And sometimes what we have seen is someone will go and talk to a third party administrator, they'll get a design and they won't realize that there could be two, three, four other options that are out there that are better or more fitting for them than what they just got. Interesting. A lot of the audience are high net worth individuals and you talk about leveraging cash balance plans and what specific benefits do cash balance plans offer high net worth individuals and how can they maximize retirement savings and tax deductions through these plans? Yeah, that's a great question. When most people are doing whether high net worth or not, they're putting money away into plans that they know about might be a solo 401 or a step IRA, something like that. And they're looking at all these different mitigation strategies that are out there and there's tons of them. 
But by not looking into this, you're losing a very large deduction that allows you to put more money away for yourself. So this is pulling more money out of your business or more money out of your income and putting it away for yourself outside into a retirement plan that could be as large as a million dollars. We've done plans, many plans around 800 to a million dollars. And then we've done plans that are around a hundred thousand dollars. So when we talk high net worth, you have the ability to put a large amount of money away, all the stars align and everything looks great. And you often have the ability to do it in a flexible basis, to put a large amount of money away every year and then bring that down. And as far as a case study that I like to bring up on flexibility, we did a case for a small law firm where they were awarded a large case from that they were working on for years. And we set up a plan where they put away almost $900,000 in year one, and they wanted to go down in, in subsequent years to $50,000 every year. So we found the design to fit. Yeah. The other adjacent question is, you know, using defined benefit plans and what are key optimization tech strategies that business owners can implement using these plans to significantly reduce their liabilities? First and foremost, it is a tax play, right? It's, it's a retirement plan. You're, you are putting away money into an actual retirement plan. And there's that separate side of that, the investable side, which can go in many different places. And there's all different. That's a whole nother podcast probably. But on the, on the actuarial side or the design side that we get involved with, from a tax standpoint, you are, drastic, you are drastically able to reduce your tax liability. You're removing that income, putting it away for yourself. It's also good from a diversification standpoint, not talking about investments, but separating to talk about diversification. Most business owners or anyone that's receiving some type of consulting income has the ability to earn I call business owner control of your income and control of your time, but you're putting that money away generally, or you're reinvesting in your business. And now this allows you to pull that money and put it into a separate retirement plan that can really be beneficial to your tax situation. And you can continue to earn rather than doing certain things that we see, which are trying to push revenues into a new year or trying to create and find additional expenses before the end of the year just to reduce a tax liability. This bucket gives you the ability to move some of those assets into an area that will bring down taxes. They're there for, to grow for you for the future. And with these, I'm going to just call them DBPs. Uh, what are the biggest misconceptions you encounter from people seeking your counsel or your, uh, advice and expertise? Flexibility. Like I mentioned before, there are ways in flexibility. And as long as the plan is maintained in a certain way, where everyone that's involved in that plan knows that, Hey, this year we bought a competitor and we are not going to be putting anything in the plan. There's ways to, uh, adjust for that. Or we just had our best year ever. How can we maximize this year, even though it might affect future years? So the flexibility that's there, but it's having the coordination of advisor, CPA, TPA, consultant, record keeper, like everybody involved. And that's where we created this consulting company four years ago to say, let's be that quarterback of all those resources. Let's not be those resources. Let's be the quarterback to make sure that we can do this in the right way and that people are running these plans to make them uh, successful. That's probably the biggest misconception. The other one I would say is the amount that can go into these plans. Uh, you don't have to put away two hundred, five hundred thousand dollars $500,000. There does become a point where it might not make sense because there are additional costs when you have all these resources. When you're saving six figures in taxes and putting a large amount of money away, there's a lot involved. It's not as simple as just run a 401k with 
profit sharing. There's a lot that's there. And there's the, what we call combination plans. So these can be added or integrated into certain retirement plans that you might already have set up. You don't have to go and start changing stuff around. One of the things that we always say is when there's a, we see a 401k and there's employees or other people involved, we want to try as best as possible not to disrupt that. We want that to run on its own and we want to work around it by layering in other areas. Interesting. The other thing that really stood out to me when researching you is this idea of overfunding a retirement plan. And most people listening, they're like overfunding a retirement plan. That's a good thing, but you actually help clients avoid the pitfalls of having too much money in their DBPs. Elaborate on that. Yeah, there's, there's overfunding and then there's underfunding and that gets into the investment side of things a little bit. These plans, we want to average a five to 6% return is really what you want to average. They are on the safer side of what you want to achieve from a financial advice area. And I'm not giving financial advice, but when you match that percentage up to the design you want to be, it's unlike a 401k where you can take a lot of risk and really go all out and try to make as much money as possible. In the pension side, you don't want to do that. You want to be more on the moderate to conservative side. Well, interesting. Yeah. That's really enlightening because you think because people are like five, six percent of people are like listening to that. They may be there to find better returns elsewhere, but I, I like how you're basically keeping preserving capital. Yeah. Chris, just to, to add on that too, one thing that I always say is in your tax bracket, you're getting anywhere between 40 to 50% on your money just by sticking it in this bucket, right? If you're a high net worth, you're possibly at that 50% tax bracket or around it, you know, let's call it 40 if we have to, but you're getting money in there and then earning a five or 6% on top of that. Great. Right. Um, but the problem is if there's too much return that's there and these assets are performing too well and the market tanks or those go all the way down, you might have to put more money into your plan that you don't want to, or you might have an extra tax because you are overfunded. So you really have to target to what that plan is getting to and what it looks like. So. That's why the coordination of advisory with KPA and CPA. The other thing too, from a tax standpoint is if you're a S corp or C corp and you have a W-2, that W-2 is also relating to how that plan gets funded. And I try not to make this too complicated, but these are just all these areas that need to work together. And where I find that Someone will say, I had this plan, it was, it, it, it had problems or I had to get rid of it or it just wasn't working out or I, there was too much involved in fees. It's because they really didn't have the right people involved to quarterback the, the, co the whole coordination. Yeah. Interesting. And one, the kind of one final question is because taxes are our biggest expense and a lot of people feel like the taxes are a, a huge waste of money. And kind of taxes change, tax policy changes with administration. There was like talk that the Harris you know, Biden administration was going to tax high net worth individuals on unrealized gains. And so how are, how is your firm thinking about this and positioning itself and ultimately offering in clients the value in this impending tax regime changing landscape? Yeah, that's another good question. Again, this is a retirement plan unrealized gains. And that refers to non-qualified accounts, non-IRA accounts. We're not seeing legislation on the table to stop these, give a problem. As long as these are compliant, and I know you have a lot of uh, people in, on the medical side that, that listen to this, and we do a lot of work in that space and, and that area, and it's all over the board. But the compliance needs to be there. What we find in the medical space too is we'll often get from a client where they have a management company, they have five LLCs, an S Corp, all these different things. And we try to create some kind of flow chart to determine where and how that plan should be held. 
Yes. So we have to look to see what's the best place. Does it fit? What employees have to get covered and what employees can we not cover? There's a lot of work involved in that side of it, but that's all part of making sure that the plan is compliant and won't have any issue. But from the standpoint of legislation to your question on that and policy changes, um, we're not really seeing anything that's targeting these types of plans. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah. It's always good to ask because again, Uncle Sam is always, you know, looking for their chunk of money. How can people find you and, and reach out to you and, and schedule a call with you to find out more how these plans can help them in their tax planning strategies? Best way is to go to our, our website, businessbenefitsconsultants.com. Mm-hmm. Take a look. There is a link on there to contact us. Happy to have individual conversations. We have a great team. We can have individual conversations about anyone's situation. You have emails there, schedule a call, a lot of information on all this. And we try to also push out a lot of value-based stuff because again, it's a specialized area, it's niche, and it really is beneficial. And it's one of those mitigation strategies that is not talked about enough because of the coordination and the amount of people and the things that are involved, but it, that's what we love about it. Yeah, it's really interesting. And the tax planning is, is really crucial. And so thanks so much for coming on. And uh, all your resources will be in the show notes. And I encourage the audience to check out Dave's uh, resources. And thanks so much for coming on. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate it.